Hello everyone and welcome back to Modded Minecraft with Night Dagger episode 7. It feels like forever since I've recorded anything. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to record tonight. My jaw is still kind of sore from my dental surgery on Wednesday. But I wanted to, you know, try to get something up for the YouTube audience. The guys who can't go over and catch me on Twitch. Um, I have done quite a bit of work over the last two days live streams. I um, really haven't done a whole lot out here, except I have moved my bees. I have some cactus set up there now, and I have a Coke oven that I just set up last night that I've got producing some cold Coke for me. Um, let's see here. I did finally get myself a good fortune pickaxe. I've done a little bit of work in my Thalmcraft room, and... I added a machine to my industrial craft room. You can also see I've added some other stuff to these rooms, noticeably these books that say the Nexus. Well, that's because probably the biggest thing that I have done is I have gone ahead and created myself a Nexus, a true proper wizard's Nexus. I've moved all of my Thalmcraft stuff in here, or my Mistcraft stuff in here, and I made this. This here is a link book modifier. It is extremely ridiculously expensive. If you look at it, it's nine blocks of diamond around a block of gold. So yeah, ridiculously expensive. But we now have quick and easy transportation to any part of the base. And you can see I still have a pretty decent amount of diamonds. I did some delving into another ritual world off camera. And I've actually set a new rule for myself in this series. If I am in a dense ore world, I will not mine any diamonds that are not directly in my path. I'm not going to go out of my way to mine diamonds. That way I can, you know, occasionally go in there and pick up some quick ores. But I'm not going to be swimming in diamonds and therefore ruining the series. Um, let's head back into the Nexus here and show you what I've got set up. Over here on this wall... I have books set up to go to all of my most commonly used uh, rooms in my wizard tower. I have one here for my industrial craft room, one for my thermal expansion room, my warehouse, and my thaumatorium. On this wall here, I have my most commonly visited other realms, including the mob land that I've been going to, the nether, and this bee world, which we'll get to in just a minute here. Over on this wall, I've got a quick link book to get down here to my mines. And over here, I have... There's a skeleton somewhere around here. I have a book stand up here for when I do world hopping. I can use this to world hop out to an area and then quickly learn it here. I still have had absolutely no luck getting that crystal sign. But, let's go check the bee world. If you take a look in here, you'll see that I've got a whole bunch of bee stuff going over on in here now. I have a combustion engine with another one of those redstone energy cells, which I have almost completely filled up. It's running a centrifuge for me, which is quite happily pumping out some bee products. I've got some bee stuff in here. And... I'm working on refining a few different strains of bees over here. I've made some progress towards both the Industrious and the Majestics. And I also started working on a Valiant trying to get up to the Heroic Bee as well. Over here I've got my infamous Bee Flyaway box. So that I'm not recycling poor innocent bees. And let's go back to my warehouse, and let's grab my Dominomicon. I've also got this thing, which is a really cool toy, which I kind of want to show you guys, because I do want to go collect a few more resources of a specific type. So let's grab ourselves a bite to eat. Let's grab ourselves a bucket, and I need some water. The easiest way to get that is just to head up to my thaumatorium. 
see how nice that is. No more running up and down and up and down and up and down. And, oh, actually I need to grab some cobblestone and a pickaxe. Let's see here, where's my pickaxe? Oh, I have a pickaxe on me. Derp. Alright, let's head out to our mines. And we're just going to head down one of these corridors here. We're going to see... I hear a slime. He's up there. Oh well. We're going to see if we can find ourselves a lava source. Oh, well, here's one over here, right? Let's go ahead and grab a little cobblestone from the area. The Wand of Equal Trade is a really nifty item that allows you to set a specific block type to be traded, and then when you right-click on any of those block or on any block in the overworld or the world around you, it trades the block that you've selected out of your inventory for that block, which makes it really good for paving rooms, like you saw the nexus there that was done using the one of equal trade to harvest the red rock as well as paving the room, but there's another trick to it as well. Well, we've got a bunch of lava here. And we got a zombie sneaking up on us. Let's go ahead and, you know, flush all this. Now we've got a bunch of obsidian here, right? Well, if we put down a block of cobblestone, and we hold shift and right click on the cobblestone, you'll see that the little block that's appearing over my wand has shifted to cobblestone. If I right click on this obsidian now, Wait, what's that? What'd it do? It mined up all that obsidian in a single shot and stuck it right into my inventory. How cool is that, huh? It's a great way to harvest large amounts of obsidian with minimal hassle. All I gotta do is pour a water bucket down, make some obsidian, and trade it right up. There's a little more. Let's go take a look over here, see if we can find some more. Yeah, there's some over here. Here's some more lava. Now it's obsidian. And, hey, check that out. Oh, notice it's not doing anything now. It's because I'm out of cobblestone have to have the item in your inventory in order for it to work. In some ways this works a lot like the Mercurial Eye out of the old equivalent exchange, except instead of using EMC it actually has to burn the blocks out of your inventory. So let's go ahead and mine up another handful of cobblestone. And let's go ahead and grab ourselves just a bit more obsidian. never really have too much obsidian. There we go. Take a little more out of the ceiling here. Now on this subject, as soon as I get done mining up all this obsidian, I am going to go show you a few more things that I've done on the live streams, and then we're going to get to today's topic, which is going to be a little bit of Thumbcraft stuff. I do want to get started on Greg Tech very soon, but I need a few more resources before I can get started on that hardcore. So now that we've got all that, let's drop a light in here so we don't get too many mobs spawning. And if we take our linking book here, we can pop right back to the Nexus, isn't that cool? Back into the warehouse, and this unusual ores chest that I've actually just been kind of using as my ore storage. Now. I have found a little bit of tungstate, I found some more shell the night, 
And in the last world that I went to, I did find five iridium ore, which is absolutely awesome. We'll have to start using that pretty soon. We're just going to throw... Actually, you know what? This qualifies as a oddity brick, so let's just throw it in there. There we go. Throw our cobblestone away. Redstone, gravel, good. Let's head back to the Nexus and go into our Thaumatorium. And let's check out what we've done. For some reason, my achievements keep getting reset. Let's see, I have learned the Goggles of Revealing. I think I learned that on the last episode I recorded. I've also learned the Wand of Lightning, the Wand of Excavation, and the Wand of Equal Trade. I haven't learned this one yet. I did also learn the Boots of the Traveler. I learned the Arcane Levitator, Warded Stone and Doors, and this stupid Arcane Ear thing, which is probably the most annoying research in the world, because it requires the element of Sonus, sound, which you can only get out of records. Well, there's only really two ways to farm records. One is to go find dungeons, and the other is to get skeletons to shoot creepers. You can imagine how much fun that is. Um, pro tip. Iron Sword. Smack a creeper three times, one shot from a skeleton will kill it. That's the easiest way. Alright, so, what do we want to do today? Well, we want to do a little more research. You can see, I've got some books in here, but if I hit those, I'm not getting any research subjects. Which means, these books right now are kind of useless. What we need to do is we need to figure out which route we want to go down. Do we want to start going down the warded jars? Do we want to start going after this last wand? Or do we want to start working on something entirely different? I think... Hmm. I think let's go ahead and start working on the warded jars. Because that's going to lead to something that we're going to need in the very near future here. Now, I have done a little bit of Thalmcraft work. You can see if I go into the Nexus here, you can see all the nightwear I've got up on the walls and these cool little lamps I decided to make. Well, I've also been dealing with some flux events because of that. Apparently dumping some excess flux into the air actually did have a negative side effect on me. Back to our warehouse. Um, let's go ahead and grab some of these glass bottles. Because I think warded jars, that's going to be our... You know what, I'm going to turn my sound down just a little bit. There we go. I'm thinking this is probably going to be the most expedient route to going towards those warded jars. Yep, there we go. Vacuos and Vitreous, so those glass jars are the absolute perfect thing. But I didn't bring enough of them, so let's go grab some more glass. And back to our Thaumatorium. See how much faster that is? This arcane work table here, if you didn't already know, it does work just like a standard workbench also. As a matter of fact, it kind of has the effect of the project table, and that you can leave it in there. Or I guess it's more like an automatic crafting table instead of a project table. But you can leave the result in there and just pull more out if you need it. Which I think is actually a good idea. I'm going to do that. There we go. Alright, we've completed 50% of the research. We know that there's two more things that we don't have yet. Come on. I'll need them eventually. I may as well just pop them out. There we go. Warded jars. You think you may have discovered a way to reinforce glass with magic. Crafting a container from this glass could theoretically keep all manner of things inside. Well, it gave us a hint there, and the hint was magic. 
So if we come over here to my Thalmcraft chest, we'll just grab some air shards out, because it's the one that I have the most of. And we'll try Precantio magic. Nope. Not that. So let's head back to the warehouse. All right. So what we're looking to do, we need to contain something. So binding could possibly be on that. Um, it's a protective item. It holds stuff inside it that would normally escape. So it could possibly have something to do with protection also. So it could be armor might be a good way to research. Let's try... let's try bind first. Yep. Binding and prison trap is on there. And I was right. Defense, protection, security. And someone mentioned the other day in one of my comments, I think it was Promakid. There we go. Discover awarded jerks. There's a whiff nearby. Asked me if I was using a cheat seat a cheat sheet for my Thomcraft stuff. I'm actually not. I am actually going through this. I have progressed through the Thomcraft research chain once in a test server. I did not take any notes or anything like that. I'm going through it all again, pretty much just with educated guesses. Where's that Thomcraft wisp? I heard it. But there is a page out there. I think it's on the Thomcraft wiki. I can't remember exactly where it's at. But there is a page out there that will allow you to look up exactly what's necessary for every research subject in the game. Use it if you want. I personally would rather try and guess from the hints that the thing is giving me. So I'm not going to. All right. And that, to me, looks like a portable hole. Now, I bet if we research those glass bottles that we have, that'll lead to that research. Oh, the hungry chest. We want a completely different route. All right. All right, let's take a look here real quick. And see what elements are on a treasure chest. Um, space and wood. Well, we can get wood right out of that. Um, it's also an animated thing, so soul might have something to do with it. Um, it's hungry, so food might have something to do with it. Let's take some of this raw beef I've got floating around here. And if this doesn't work, we got a couple of other ways we can go. Oh, something's here. Yep, soul spirit is part of it. 62%, you think you might be a way to... No. Um, you think you might be able to imbue a chest with some self-awareness and animation. A chest that could fill itself might prove useful. So let's try the hungry thing. Nope. I guess that was too literal. It's not wood either. All right. Well, if we're dealing with animation, then Imprerito probably has something to do with it. I've discovered a good source of that is levers. Oh. 
So let's try Imperito. Oh, um, nope, guess not. Hmm. Where to go? That handles the container part of it. That handles the life force part of it. Maybe a mechanism? I'm going to turn my sound down just a little bit more here because I'm doing so much warping back and forth. The sound effects are starting to get a little ear little irksome for me. So I can only imagine they are for everyone else as well. All right, so that got us nowhere so far. Um possibly change. We are changing the chest. changes on there. And motion. That makes sense. I made a comment last night on the live stream that a lot of the research stuff boils down to you guess and you guess and you guess and then when you finally figure out what it is it's like derp. I should have thought of that earlier. Um, no, arrows don't do it. Trapdoors do. Because a door and a trapdoor, their primary function is to move, so. In a lot of ways, Thomcraft makes some sort of weird sense like that. Alright, we know how to make the hungry chess. Who's a good puppy? You don't want another bone, do you? Come on. You and your buddies keep walking in here all the time. Wanting bones. Come on. Let's go. May as well get a friend from Mutton Chop. Come here, both of you. You sit, you sit. Good dogs. Wolves, whatever. Alright. So that was a completely off-the-wall research topic. That was one of the hidden ones. Um... That portable hole is still kind of taunting me, but now I'm going to, you can't really say cheat, because I have done this legit before and I'm not using a cheat sheet, but I know from experience that researching Silverwood will lead you down a certain route. pure, clean, stainless, that leads you down a specific research route. Um, let's see here. But I can't remember what else goes into it, so now we're going to play the guessing game. Um, I don't think... Oh, yep, control command is part of it. Basic flux research, that's what I was after. Come on. Now, of course, we're researching flux. We need something that's going to help us with the element of flux, right? Well, it just so happens I have a ton of nether wart now. How did I get a ton of nether wart? Nether wart farm. That I keep loaded with a chunk loader. I know it doesn't have to be in the nether anymore. I know you can have it in the overworld. I just like it here. And that book still leads me to my warehouse, so I might have to change that at some point. I kind of want it to take me back to the nexus. 
Let's go research this nether wart. <clears throat> Get our flux research in. And it takes a crap ton of nether wart to do this, too. Alright, Machina Permutatio. Well, just so happens we have what's required for both. Through random chance. Basic flux research. I actually meant to read that. No. Keeps trying to burn on me. I'm going to put it in this corner. Alright. So, where is it? Oh, there it is. Basic flush research. I guess it was that and not portable hole. You've taken your first steps towards understanding and managing flux. Your research has led you to two practical applications, the flux filter and the arcane alembic. Flux filters are crafted using gold and specially treated silverwood. The arcane alembic uses a worded jar, a brewing stand, some gold ingots, and a flux filter. Now, what do these things do? Uh, let me check my time. I've got about 14 minutes left to make this 40 minute episode. I'm feeling alright, so I think I might actually try and show you guys what this does. So, to do that we're going to have to go to our warehouse and get some stuff together. Uh, the first thing we are going to need is some gold. We're also going to want to put the oddity bricks away. We're also going to need a brewing stand. Which is made with blaze rod and three cobblestone. Should be pretty easy to manage that. I'm actually going to make three of them. Alright, if we take a look at this, <clears throat> you'll see that this has to be done on the infusion altar. It requires 25 vis, and it also requires 8 permutatio and 8 purus. Well, where can you get permutatio and purus from? You can get purus from silverwood logs, but you're also burning a lot of spare stuff in the process. So, not a great idea to use that if you can avoid it. Permutatio you can get from this, but you're also going to get some flux out of that. Unfortunately, there is no way to do this without getting some flux. The best way that I've found to do it... Um, I can't even remember now. I know there was something that I found that was also pure, but we're just going to have to use diamonds. Alright, so... To do this, we need 8 purists, so we need 2 diamonds, and we need 8 permutatio, so we need 8 seeds. We're going to come over here to our infusion altar, where we will put the required ingredients in there. Over here, we'll fill our cauldron. Wait for it to boil. This is going to cause some flux. And we have a flux filter. We also burn quite a bit of power out of our wand. Let's go ahead and put that back in, because now we have to do another combination. First of all, we also need to get one of these warded jars. This one, thankfully, is easy. It's an arcane wood block and some glass panes. And a little bit of ease from a wand. The arcane wood block is just great wood logs on our arcane work table, infuse it with some vis, call it good. Long and the short of it, we need some arcane wood and some glass. Let's grab our panes, come over here and grab, looks like I don't have much great wood, I want to use regular oak. 
really should go grab some more oak wood. We'll put our wand on the table here. That's going to give us a few arcane wood blocks. Put the wand back on our hotbar to recharge it quickly. That's going to give us two warded jars, and we have a few pieces of arcane wood left over. Let's go ahead and grab our wand of the apprentice. We're going to need him again. And if we take a look at the Thaumonomicon, the infusion, or the arcane alembic, is made with a warded jar, a brewing stand, a gold ingot, a flux filter, and two more gold ingots. So, gold ingots like that. The flux filter we made earlier goes in there. Um, the brewing stand goes there. And I've already forgotten. Oh, warded jar goes there. This wand is too weak. What does that mean? Well, look at the amount of vis that it takes to make this. And bear in mind that this wand can only hold 50. We have to upgrade this wand. We learned how to do that a long time ago. Back here on the Unified Thaumic Field Theory. We just need one of each color of shard. Which we can get in our warehouse. And if we come over here. And we put our wand there. And... We put all of these around here. I've got it wrong. Air, fire, earth, water. Now, you can see that's lit up, but we got a problem here. We don't have a wand. That's right, you have to have a wand to make a wand. Kind of silly, but that's how it goes. So let's grab a gold nugget. stick, and another shard. We're going to use air, because I've got a ton of them. And let's make ourselves another wand. Over here on the infusion altar, we're going to drop that wand in here. We need 16 Precantio in order to make this happen. Which means, hey, guess what? We're dealing with a little more flux, aren't we? That's going to get us 12. Mm. There's no nice way to do this, I don't think. Yeah, no matter what we do, we're going to get some flux, so we may as well just use a little bit of this. We're already dealing with flux effects. Whoa, hello. Not what I meant to do. I'm so glad that lava's covered. The Wand of the Adept. Now with that wand, let's go ahead and throw our Wand of the Apprentice in here. With that wand, we can now do this combination. This is going to require 8 Aqua, 8 Aura, and 8 Vitreous. Well, we can get Vitreous from glass. And it just so happens... Four pieces... So, oh, hello. Got to refill it and let it cook first. It just so happens... There's a Wisp somewhere around here. It just so happens this is pure Vitreous. So, four of that will satisfy our need for that. We need some Aura, and we need some Aqua. Well, we can get Aqua out of clay, but not nearly enough. I'm thinking some bottles might be the best way to do this. 
And as far as aura, arrows. We need eight aura, and each arrow gives us one. So we need eight arrows. That's going to satisfy... No, maybe it's not. Oh, wait, uh, no. Wrong thing. My bad. Okay, water bottles, going to give us one water each. Uh, that's kind of crappy. But we'll do it. That fulfills the aqua. Man, this is going to cause a huge amount of flux. Alright, and in Miscraft, I've got a feather. One lonely little feather. Well, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. I also don't want to go looking for chickens, so we're already going to be causing some flux. We may as well just get it over with and do it. This will meet our requirement. Wait, what? The feather was flight, wasn't it? Not aura. Damn it. We're really going to cause some flux here. Needed a total of eight, so four shards. Whatever. There we go. Now we can get our canalembic. I don't want to even know what we just spilled out into the atmosphere, but... This, however, is going to help us prevent doing that again. How is that going to help us? Well, we'll have to find out next time, because I'm pretty much out of time for this episode. So, um, hmm. Nah, I got time for a short explanation. Basically, what you do is you fill this thing up, just like that. And let's say we were going to make another one of these arcane filters. Well, if we take a look at this, it requires 8 permutatio and 8 purus, right? Well, we had a hard time getting pure purus because diamonds have a lot of contamination in them from vitreous. Well, what we can do here, let's go ahead and make another arcane filter. We need 8 purus and 8 permutatio. Well, we can get the permutatio out of the seeds. Now, if we head back to the warehouse, and we grab two diamonds, and head back to the Thaumatorium, and toss those two diamonds in here. We can see we've now met the requirements, and if we pull the thing out of there... Hey, what's this? There's some green liquid in here. Well... If we were to head back to our warehouse and make... some more glass, because I don't have any... If you take a piece of clay, and some glass, yep, regular glass, 
and th three pieces of it, actually, and some clay. That is going to get you some files. What this has done is it has taken one of the spare essences that was contained in this reaction and stored it in this alembic. In this case, it picked up Herba which is kind of exactly what I didn't want it to pick up. I wanted it to pick up the crystal essence. So we've dumped a huge amount of flux into this again, which is always a good time. But that's what we're making these Alembics for. We're making the Alembics so that we don't do this anymore in the future. Once again, we're looking at 8 Vitreous, 8 Aura, 8 Aqua. Well, let's head out here, shall we? Thumbcraft, we need four of you. We may as well just get it over with. Four of you. And what was it again? Uh, a vitreous, which will also be taken care of from these. So if we head back to our Thaumatorium again, fill our cauldron, and dump in four water shards and four air shards, once the cauldron starts bubbling. We can get another Arcane Alembic, and this one filled up with some Essentia Vitreous. Eight total. We can now put this Alembic on there. Let's go ahead and make one more real quick. You can see we need some Purus and we need some Permutatio. Well, we know where to get it already. We need two diamonds. And we need a total of eight seeds. Three of which I have on me. Head to the Thaumatorium again. Fill this up with some water. Ow! Aha! My dogs are coming to my defense. They are, however, rather derpy about it. Never mind them. Let's throw the diamonds in there. Throw the seeds in there, and let's pull our flux filter out, and you'll see that these have filled up. We've trapped, sure, or we've trapped some extra Essentia Vitreous and some more Essentia Herba. Let's go ahead and... Let's see, I've got two on there now. Let's set this up one more time. Ah, uh, we need another warded jar. And I don't have any more time, so we'll continue this next time. You can kind of see where I'm going with it, but yeah, we'll finish this build next time and maybe get a little bit more Thalmcraft stuff done. But for right now, my jaw is really starting to hurt. I'm past 40 minutes anyway. It's a good place to stop. This has been Night Dagger with Let's Play a Mod of Minecraft, Episode 7. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. If you want to see where all of this fun stuff came from that I'm playing around with now, uh, feel free to head over to Twitch, check out the live streams. I did a lot of work over there. So if you want to see what I've been doing during the past two days, check that out. Other than that, we'll continue some more stuff in the future. I'll catch you guys later.